Good morning. This is the first Sunday of Advent. It is a moment in a season where we anticipate. And I'd like to use for the sermonic theme today, staying mindful, staying mindful. Last summer in the throes of COVID and with an alarming increase of carjackings, right down the street at Kimbark Plaza, Keith Cooper was the victim of an attempted carjacking. Instead of saying, hey, you can have my car and letting them have it, he decided to give them a run for their money. He resisted. Witnesses said they saw two males punching and assaulting Keith. I say perhaps he won the battle but did not win the war. The two males did flee the scene, leaving his car behind. And by the time the police arrived, Keith was unresponsive. By the time they got him to the hospital, he was declared dead. Keith was someone's daddy, and Keith was someone's granddad. He was a member of Augustana Lutheran Church. He attended church regularly, like many of you. He helped faithfully with the serving of their breakfast program. He almost feels like a member of United Church of High Park. He loved mentoring young people, and the irony, irony is not lost on his family that he would die at the hands of young people. I remember over a decade ago, I was retrieving my mail from the mailbox on campus. I was looking through my mail and walking slowly. This was way before COVID. It was way before carjackings. This pol police woman was on me before I knew it, scaring the dickens out of me. She greeted me and said she wanted to warn me. She told me that just as she had walked on me, up on me, someone else could have walked up on me unknowingly. She said that I was a potential victim. She said to me, it is not safe to be outside walking and not aware of your surroundings. I got the point. Living in an urban context, one must be aware, constantly hypervigilant. Reading our environment, it's almost as though you can't relax on the job because to do so could cost you gravely. Our city and our world hasn't grown safer. It's a full-time job to stay safe, with some seniors sharing they are afraid to come out once it gets dark at night. In a town hall meeting with the 2nd District Police, I listened to neighbors share their fear of carjackings and what's been happening in our neighborhood. The absurdity of staying woke and being perpetually ready hit me as I was me meditating on this text for today. The end of life as we know it is coming. Jesus is returning and no one knows when, so just, just stay prepared. Just always be prepared. He's not telling us the day. He just wants us to be ready when he comes. It could happen today or maybe next week or maybe next year or maybe in 10 years or who knows. It may happen after we're gone. We just don't know. Those people that were waiting and waiting died waiting. It's been a minute, but remember, even though we've been waiting for a couple of thousand of years, stay ready. Noah remembered. Remember, there was no sign, but he built an ark and he waited and eventually the rain did come. Be ready. You think if the homeowner knew that the burglar was coming when the burglar came, that the homeowner wouldn't have been ready for him? So just always be ready. Our spiritual, our physical, our mental health, they're all declining. Our kids cannot bear the weight of it. We are self-medicating through unhealthy means. Maybe what we really need this Advent is not to remain awake, but to stay mindful. Mindfulness is being aware of your thoughts and what you're feeling and to look at those without judgment or labeling. Mindfulness invites us to be present now. Don't worry about what you're going to cook for dinner. Just be here in the worship service now. Just lose yourself in the music. Just be present to the prayers, the listening, the seeing, the feeling of now. To keep before us the mystery and wonder of this journey we have been on with God. We didn't start yesterday. Take a walk in nature, spend quality time with family, sit in silence and release what you've been carrying. 
join us for a movie after church. Show up and stay for a moment, balance. I invite you this holiday season with all the blares of music and marketing to stay mindful of the Christmas story. In this story is hope, a soon-to-be mom is carrying Jesus. A lady who had given up on becoming pregnant is carrying John. A non-biological-to-be father sticks around. Each of them, individuals with fear and anxiety and doing that adulting the best way they know how, moving into a future that is uncertain but filled with hope. Babies on the way will do it to you. Like when Olivia attends church or any other baby they invite us without fail to be mindful and present. They in fact demand it, don't they? In seconds, a situation can go from good to real bad if you aren't present. Little ones invite us to be here in the moment. I remember watching this kid at a children's museum. He had gotten his scarves and he was sitting right over an air duct and he had them blowing up in the air and he just stood there for minutes fully enthralled in the scars floating in the air, fully present to those scars. He was so into it and I watched. Amazing, amazing stuff. All around us is danger, but all around us is wonder and delight waiting for us to see it. And one of the churches I used to serve at, there was this lady named Lois. Lois was so full of hope. Church was okay, but Lois showed up every Sunday a little bit more excited than the rest of us. I tried to inquire, find out in secret, was she getting a secret message from God that none of the rest of us were getting? But you know what I learned? One, she had her own time with God at home. And second, Lois was fully present when she arrived. She expected every Sunday for God to say something she needed in her life. Lois remained present to the moment, expecting God to bless her. And she shared, God never disappointed. Every Sunday, I could count on Lois to have that smile, walking in service, expecting God, being present in the moment. This Thanksgiving, I joined another family in celebrating Thanksgiving Day, a.k.a. Indigenous People Day. We talked about what everyone liked to eat before we got together. It took a moment, but we finally came up with a menu that all of us that were going to be there on that day could eat and enjoy together. I took my time making my dishes fully present, staying mindful. I got my seasonings out and measured them flour and cutting and chopping, and I so got into cooking the dish. It was so good to be fully present to the moment, to not worry about what was coming with Advent or the next day, to sit down and eat a meal with people I liked. I thoroughly enjoyed it. To be around others, to talk and laugh, to see others enjoy themselves, to enjoy the smells coming from the oven. Kids do not have to be the only one to be present to the moment staying mindful. So I invite you again and again to show up for this story. Do not be so anxious for tomorrow's doctor appointment that you miss the opportunity to be present to this moment. Do not be so caught up in your bills you miss the wonder of being impregnated with an idea. Do not be so focused on the mistakes that you miss the joy that's calling you. Do not be so critical of others that you miss the opportunity for fellowship. Be present to this moment. Be here now. Be present to miracles and wonder. Be present to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Be here. Be here right now. All of you be present. Prior to COVID, this black man does an experiment in the mall. He comes up to several people. He opens his arms wide indicating that he wants a hug back. Over and over again, people look at him. Some are amused, some are not. But no one, no one accepts his invitation. Now you might say he's a stranger, but I had to wonder what would I have done if a stranger opened their arms up to me, inviting me in this moment to embrace? What would you have done 
but watching from a distance gives me perspective. It allows me to see the human condition, how very distrustful we are of each other. Sometimes even in the church we can be a little distrustful because hurt happens here. Sometimes we are hurt in the church. What caused all of these people not to accept the invitation? And are we missing an opportunity to see the wonder and beauty of a moment? Are we so warped by being vigilant, we miss the opportunity to be touched? We miss the opportunity to hug. We miss the opportunity to have a beautiful encounter with another. The text was written today for a certain time in a certain community, which is not us. These communities were sometimes worried about Jesus' return. They were unable to live in the present moment. This text was written several decades after the present moment it's speaking of, so sort of a looking back on while writing. And even today, sure, there is enough to keep us on guard as well. But we've been coming through some hard times for a while, just like the Israelites came through. And what we notice in the Old Testament is when the Israelites kept coming through, God would send a prophet to share a message of hope. So we share hope and we invite you here. We don't speak doom today. This day will soon leave us and we'll never see it again. But for now, let's be present. Let's be in this moment. The gospel song says, every day is a day of thanksgiving. God's been so good to me. Every day God blesses me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Be present to the blessing. Be present to the moment because tomorrow will come. There is one way that we can prepare for adversity. There's one way we can be prepared. I call it the cookie jar. Now, the cookie jar doesn't refer to a literal cookie jar, and there are no literal cookies. But what I do invite you to do with this cookie jar is to remember to be present and mindful of God's goodness, to make note of when God has been so good to you, and to put that in your cookie jar. When God does something for you that just touches every bone in your body, put that in your cookie jar. When God gives you that aha moment where you know it's God speaking to you, put that in your cookie jar. When you have that moment you're inspired by your faith journey, put that in your cookie jar and hold on to all of the cookies because you're only going to come to the cookie jar when your faith is low. You're only going to come to the cookie jar when you're down, when you're really, really at that moment. The cookies keep us mindful, staying mindful of God's faithfulness running after us. The cookies remind you God did it before and God can what? God can do it again. The cookies encourage you trouble don't last always. Stay mindful and always keep coming to the cookie jar when you need to for the cookies. So I want to invite you one last time to be fully present to the wonder and mystery of God. Reread the Christmas story. You know, have you ever seen a movie and then you watch it again and you notice stuff that you didn't see the first time? Read the Christmas story with the expectation that you'll see and notice things and it'll speak to you in a different way because you're on a different part of your journey. Show up to church and expect God to have a special word just for you every time. Be amazed by scarves floating in the air. Try a new dish and invite all five of your senses to be present. Be mindful of what you're feeling and explore and share it with God. Come watch a movie with us after church. Drive down a street with Christmas lights or get on the Christmas L or go down to State Street. See the world through the eyes of a toddler. And remember, 
Remember, just because you read the story a lot of times, you can still read it again and peek in on Mary, Elizabeth, Zachariah, and Joseph. Receive each day as a gift. And yeah, there's real tragedy all around us. But make sure you remain open to see the beauty and the miracles. The journey towards Christmas is probably richer than the destination. So let us enjoy these four weeks of Advent. Take in the beauty of this story. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this invitation to anticipate the birth of your son. We thank you that as we take this journey, we will see miracles along the way. We will see signs. We will see impregnation. We will see people just like us being called by you. Lord, open us up. Allow us to stay mindful. Allow us not to be so tainted by life that we are unable to see the beauty of life. Open our eyes and open our hearts to your wonder, to your mystery, and to your beauty. In Jesus' name, amen.